Hi and welcome to Astronical. This is possibly the start of a new series of sorts. I'm just going to call uh, Astronical Quickies. Basically, no intro, just a three to five minute long video on whatever I'm kind of almost ranting about or having problems with at the moment. Some of you may recognise this. This is the audio circuit for the audio DAC software that I'm doing, the DAC audio software that I'm doing. So we have an ESP32 and we're driving amplifier via the digital to analog converter interface that, have, that this has two of on this on this particular chip to power this speaker and I've been developing this software for a little while I was working on it again this week with uh, hopefully something that was going to be ready hopefully for a few days if you do hear a small child in the background that's because of course this is a uh, a definitely rough and ready video just shooting while the kids are around me although if that child could be a little bit quieter that would be really handy so and it broke uh, if we power it up, all we get is, and it has done this on and off occasionally, in fact we're not even getting anything, so the LED is really dim, flickering on and off, I've reflawed all these joints, uh, these joints on the header here, um, we might be able to get it to do something, if I press the reset button, get a few clicks on the speaker, and if I press and hold it down we'll get many clicks and basically it's just browning out and resetting um, and it was irritating I was about to throw this entire module away I'll just unplug that and the power bank is fine um, I'll just show you on this this plug power, the power bank we've got a little uh, nano here which has been programmed just to flash its LED so I'll just plug that into the power bank show you that the power bank is fine obviously I've empowered it from the computer and an independent supply as well so that's flashing fine and um, I was about to throw this away. I'd ordered a new one of these. In fact, I ordered a couple of new ESP32s, one identical to this, and another one that has actually uh, brought out more pins from the actual ESP32 device under the hood. And it was about to be tossed in the bin. And I thought, well, it seems like a power regulation issue, is my initial thoughts, because things are, it seemed like it was browning out and things. So I kept my meter up to it, and yeah, um, it was getting. It could get 3.3 volts, uh, where it should do, occasionally, but it would drift down to uh, 2 point something. The main supply was also being dragged down a little bit. Basically not working, so it might not solve the problem, but we just get something to point with, such as my meter lead. Let's turn my meter off so it starts beeping at me as well. Um, this is the power regulator here. Um, it's uh, AMS, one more, AMS 777, triple, let's say that again, AMS 1117. Uh, 3.3 volt power regulator so what I've done as I say it was about to go in the bin and these things aren't that cheap relatively compared to Arduinos and other stuff um, they cost around you know five UK pounds these I've just ordered 10 of these power regulators for I think it was 19 pence or 20 pence or something like that similar amount in euro cents delivered so I've ordered 10 of these for about 20 pence delivered from China so I thought for that price it's worth um, doing that, they'll take about a month to, to arrive. So when actually the, when actually they arrive in, I will desolder this and put a new one in and see if it actually solves the problem. And I wouldn't be surprised because they did a few rough calculations which I had done before. Um, the total current draw from this, if this speaker is at full output and this is a four ohm speaker being driven basically on, although it says five volts there, I'm driving it via the 3.3 volt line, which might have been a bit of a mistake because obviously that's going to end up going through the power regulator. Um, it, it can draw a maximum around right about 0.8 of an amp. These are rated at one amp on a good day at an extreme high, maybe with a bit more better heat sink on as well. So I've been driving this probably near to its um, full tolerance uh, for some time. While I've been doing this, maybe I should have connected this up, this um, amplifier to the 5 volt line, perhaps with the voltage in. Anyway, it's done now. So I'll order some of these, and when they come, I'll take this off. And you can see it's surface mount, but it's not the hardest surface mount you're ever going to do. I mean, these are hard surface mounts, but this one is actually fairly big pads and it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Just take that off, whack a new one on, see if we can save this entire board. And in fact, I'm, for speed, because I want to get on with this project for the next release of the software, I've ordered some of these, one of these off eBay, which you pay roughly double the price, but I'll have it here in the next two days so I can continue with the project. So that was that, that was annoying, so that, that, that's hopefully, I'm going to fix that at some point in the future and I've got a new board coming up. The next thing was, I have a Heartbeat project, and on that project I use, where is it, let's have a quick look, open this video, it's going to be less than five minutes after I just said it's a quickie. So, 
I use these, so I'll take one out. So, little heart sensors. Yeah. They go on your fingers, little uh, infrared uh, LED it shines, it reflects off and, and various things. And you can measure the blood flow and that gives an indication of heartbeat. They're not brilliant. If you're moving your finger about a lot, it can give rogue results. You know, fantastic. So I thought I'd look for a different sensor. So just randomly on AliExpress, I ordered one of these. I got two of these sent to me. I only ordered one. The order said one. But anyway, I got two for, yeah, not a lot of money. I think the idea is they have um, an infrared LED, an infrared, keep this in my hand, infrared LED, infrared sensor. I think you put your finger sort of like that. And it measures the ah, amount of infrared that's getting through. Uh, as an indication, because when your heart pumps, there's a slight increase in blood flow, and slightly less infrared will get through because of that increase in blood flow. So that's the idea. Anyway, these are absolutely rubbish. And I, when I tested it, and it was rubbish, I mean really bad. All there's on here is the sender, the receiver, and a couple of resistors. That is it. There is no more, no other passive circuitry on there or anything. So, yeah, just rubbish. It just really doesn't pick up. Anything you, you contact, you connect this to the um, analog to converter, and you get such small variation in, and it's so variable, it's absolutely rubbish. And I got two of them, so that's twice as rubbish. And so they are going in the bin. I am going to look at the software I did for this. I'll put a link up in the um, window back there nowish uh, to the original project for this. But I apologise already; the sound on it was was poor. But it's been my most popular video by some stretch, uh, this heartbeat monitor. So I'm going to go back to this and I'm going to have a look if I can improve the software to try and sort of filter out some of the roughness and make it a more uh, useful sensor. Anyway, that's it. That's my sort of like rants and annoyances of today all the way with a broken ESP32 and absolutely rubbish sensors. Uh, so that's all for now and I'll see you next time.